Good morning, friends. Welcome to Walking Through His Word with Darina here in January 2023. It's been a few weeks since I've been here for the live broadcast. I took a break with my family um, just over the holidays and a much needed brain break for three weeks there. And I am thrilled to be back here with you for this year's kickoff of walking through his word. And if you're new around here, please say hello in the comments. Let me know what city you're joining from. And if you're a regular, drop me a little emoji. Let me know what your week has been like. I'm so happy to be back here with you and to be continuing with our broadcast. So if you're new around here, walking through his word is something that I actually started during the pandemic when the world was shut down, we were all sheltering at home, and I really felt called to pray in community with people online. And then ended up continuing this as a weekly broadcast where we would really dig into scripture, walk through verse by verse, and spend about 30 minutes just encouraging each other, praying through God's word together, and getting a chance to see how God's word comes alive every time we read it. And so I'm really happy that you have taken a little bit of time to be with me this morning. I want to just encourage you to, to say hello in the comments. Let me know, how is your new year kicking off? I know for me, the new year doesn't really start until my kids go back to school. And they just started this past Monday um, back at school after a three week break. And so it was kind of my like launching into the new year, back to work with my writing and speaking. I'm working on a new book project, which I think I've mentioned in the past if you've been here, but I signed a contract in December with InterVarsity Press and I'm writing a Bible study on Ruth, the book of Ruth and just how God has such a heart for the vulnerable, which is displayed through the book of Ruth. So I'm super excited about that project. Honestly, it was a little painful getting back to work and trying to get into the groove of things, but I also am just expectant and my heart is focused um, for these next few months on that writing project. Today, I am going to be walking through Psalm 110 with you. And so if you have space that you can get out your Bibles, I would love it if you followed along. But I recognize that some of you also listen to this maybe while you're commuting or while you're running. And that is perfectly fine. I'm going to read the scriptures out loud and pray for all of us to just be meditating on these words. Um, I just want to say hello to a few of my friends here who are live in the comments. Good morning to Bria. She says, the new year has been amazing. I love being in the word daily and loving some new habits like running. Congrats, Bria. I'm so excited for you. And I know we've been kind of communicating about that as well. Really excited about some of those goals that you have for the new year. Um, I'm wondering, does anyone else have a goal or a practice of running or walking that they are moving into for 2023? I see my friend, the running anthropologist, is here this morning. He says, great, it's chilly in Florida. Tampa Bay Galloway just started our spring training season session this week. Awesome. Well, congrats to all of you there in Tampa Bay. And I know it's not usually chilly in Florida, so um, praying that you all stay warm. And I just am kind of concluding a training block my husband, Sean, and I are going to be running the Carlsbad Half Marathon and Marathon this weekend, so we're really excited about that. Good morning, Esther. I'm glad that you're here. You said it's a busy but exciting year, downsizing to a smaller house. Ooh, yes, that's a big one. That's a big task. Well, if some of you are watching this later as a video broadcast or recording or even on my YouTube channel, I just want you to know you're always welcome to still participate in the comments. I read all of those and I'd be honored to be able to engage with you there. Let's go ahead and dive in to our psalm for today that we're going to walk through. And this is a psalm of David, so it's written by David, and it's in the category of what they call a royal psalm. So we don't see that many of these um, throughout the book of Psalms, or actually it's several books, but this one is an interesting one, and it's a short one. It's only seven verses today. But I want us to read this with the lens that not only are they celebrating an earthly king, but they are looking forward 
to the Messiah to come. And we think about this in David's words because David himself was a king. But the language that he's using is actually pointing to the capital K king who is to come. And this is really a song to celebrate God's promises to David. So we're going to go ahead and read it and then we'll just kind of unpack it verse by verse together. So this is Psalm 110 in the English Standard Version, a Psalm of David. It says, the Lord says to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool. The Lord sends forth from Zion, your mighty scepter. Rule in the midst of your enemies. Your people will offer themselves freely on the day of your power in holy garments. From the womb of the morning, the dew of your youth will be yours. The Lord has sworn and will not change his mind. You are a priest forever. After the order of Melchizedek, the Lord is at your right hand. He will shatter kings on the days of his wrath. He will execute judgment among the nations, filling them with corpses. He will shatter chiefs over the wide earth. He will drink from the brook by the way. Therefore, he will lift up his head. If you're just joining me this morning, I see several people have just jumped on live here on Instagram. I'm reading from Psalm 110 today, and we are walking through this royal psalm, which is the category that this psalm falls under. And it's an interesting one. So I want to just really look closely at some of the language here in Psalm 110 so that we can come to an understanding of what David is writing about. What is he even talking about? This is actually a song that they would have sung in celebration of the king, in celebration of God's promises to David. And as I said at the top, that they're looking forward to the king, the priest king, the Messiah to come. And, and this side of, um, you know, we know that the New Testament, we know that Jesus came with the side of Christmas. We know that Jesus was the king of kings who was born in Bethlehem. And we know that his ministry was to reach out to the lost here on earth and that he died and rose again. And so as this psalm is looking forward to that, we have the privilege of knowing what happens on the other side. So let's go ahead and dive in. In verse one, it opens with something called an oracle from the Lord. And I want you to pay attention to that word Lord because it's repeated here. It says, the Lord says to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool. So this is really interesting. Psalm 110 verse one, the Lord, the first Lord, if you are looking visually at the Bible right now, you'll notice is in all caps. And so the Lord in all caps is meant to be talking about God himself, the Lord. But then the second Lord, it says to my Lord is Lord, first letter L capitalized, and then the rest of the letters are lowercase. And so this is a, a tiny little nuance, but important to just take note of that that Lord is the Davidic king. So the king, and that's what makes this a priest king um, that we're talking about here. And so it's the Lord God is saying to the king, sit at my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool. And what's really interesting is this language of sit at my right hand. The right hand of God was a place of honor and is a place of honor. Also, it is a symbol of authority. The right hand is a symbol of power. And this is the main quality of God that we're going to see bubbles to the surface here in Psalm 110. You know, through the Psalms, we've been doing this for 110 weeks, friends. We have seen God's character over and over again, words that characterize who he is, words like faithfulness and steadfast love, which is hesed in the Hebrew. Um, that's my word of the year, actually. And so I'm, I'm really looking for steadfast love and how it plays out, especially through the Psalms going forward. We see that he is the God of salvation, that he is our helper, that he is our guide. All of these words that describe who God is, he's righteous, he's gracious, he's merciful. But today, the word that we see that describes God is that word power. And I want us to think about that in our hearts 
that he is all powerful, that he contains the power. Um, there's a word that's kind of a fancy word, omnipotent, which means all powerful. And so we can describe God as being omnipotent, that he is the king of kings. And the people, as they are singing this song, would be exalting God as such. So we see that God is asking the king, and in this case, it's the king to come, Jesus, to sit at his right hand, to be in that place of power. Now, today we're going to jump around a little bit. I want to look at some cross-references with you. Matthew 26, verse 64. Because this is going to help illuminate for us a little bit more about this idea of power and the Davidic king. I'm going to flip over here into the New Testament, the first book of the Gospels of the New Testament, chapter 26. And then we are going to look at verse 64. Jesus said to him, you have said so, but I tell you from now on you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of power, and power is with a capital P, and coming on the clouds of heaven. So here we have D Jesus in Matthew recorded as talking about this same kind of imagery, that he's going to sit at the right hand of his Father. We know that. And we can also see that he is declaring that there is a capital P power that he possesses that was given to him by his father. I just think it's really interesting. And so we think about Jesus as the messianic king, the Messiah to come. And as we look at this text, we also see that God is going to subdue the enemies. It says, Rule in the midst of your enemies, verse 2, your people will offer themselves freely on the day of your power in holy garments from the womb of the morning. The dew of your youth will be yours. I love this beautiful imagery here in Psalm 110, verse 3, from the womb of the morning. Can you imagine what that might look like? If, you, if you're able, maybe type in the comments, what are some of the images that that brings to mind? The womb of the morning. I think about the womb as being a very sacred place. It's the place where a woman carries a baby. And we think about how Mary was the womb for God himself. She carried Jesus, God's own son, in her womb. She herself being only a young person, a teenager, um, last month at the end of 2022, I shared with you Mary's psalm as kind of our last psalm for the, for the year and thinking about how Mary was the womb of God. So here it's talking about the womb of the morning. For me, I, I think about the sunrise and how the sunrise is that expression of the womb of the morning. And it says the dew of your youth will be yours. So there is this sense that um, there's going to be the energy of our youth that is here. Now let's keep reading because this is really interesting. Verse four, it says, the Lord has sworn and will not change his mind. You are a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Okay, so I want to jog your memories a little bit and maybe you're not familiar with this story and that's okay. I was able to study who Melchizedek Melchizedek, that's a mouthful, um, was as I took my residency Bible course um, last year, I went through a year and a half of a pretty intense verse by verse Bible course, but I was so interested to learn about Melchizedek. We can call him Melchizedek for short. And he was the priest king of Jerusalem. He was part of the royal bloodline, so he was a king, but he was also a high priest. And so those are two separate roles that were held by the same man. And so when it's talking about after the order of Melchizedek, this was the king of Jerusalem, the priest of God, and he was an example of a Davidic king. He was an example of one who was both a king and a priest. So I'm actually going to have us go back 
in the Old Testament. So we're going to turn the other direction now to Genesis chapter 14 that shares just a little bit about Melchizedek and an interesting encounter that he has with Abraham. And this may help you to kind of understand a little bit more about who he is and why it's important that they are referring to Melchizedek right now. So Genesis chapter 14, we're going to read verses 18 through 20. If you're following along or you can just listen in. It says, and Melchizedek, king of Salem, and so Salem was actually referring to Jerusalem, Salem, brought out bread and wine. He was priest of God most high, and he blessed him and said, blessed be Abram by God most high, possessor of heaven and earth, and blessed be God most high, who has delivered your enemies into your hand. And Abram gave him a tenth of everything. So we got two guys here, King Melchizedek and Abraham. And hopefully you're familiar with who he is. But if you're not, one of the founding fathers, he was one of the patriarchs. And really our faith that began with Abram and his brave and courageous choice to move his family and to follow God. And so here we have this king who is blessing Abram. And then Abram is making this choice to tithe for the first time. So he's giving a tenth of everything that he owns um, in response to the king. And so we see the king here is both a king and a priest and how it's pointing to Jesus. We're gonna flip back to Psalm 110. And we're going to look at what it says again. It says, you are a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. And so it's causing those who are reading this psalm and causing those who are even, you know, singing it during the time that David read it or wrote it, that he actually is pointing to this being a very special place that you could be both a priest and a king. And as we know, that's who Jesus is. And it says throughout the New Testament how Jesus was our priest, that he intercedes on our behalf, and he also is the king of kings, the ultimate king. So it's interesting to think about how Melchizedek was sort of a precursor or a foreshadowing of the true king of kings, the true priest king, Jesus, the Messiah who was to come. Let's go ahead and keep reading here to the end of the psalm, verses five through seven. The Lord is at your right hand. And so we have that repetition again of the right hand. Who can remember what I had said about the right hand? Why is that important? Type it in the comments. Why is the sitting at the right hand of the Lord so important? It says he will shatter kings on the day of his wrath. He will execute judgment among the nations, filling them with corpses. He will shatter chiefs over the wide earth. He will drink from the brook by the way. Therefore, he will lift up his head. Okay, so friends, this is interesting, right? I mean, pretty vivid language here. And Esther, you're right that the right hand was the place of honor. It was to represent the power of the king and the power that the king would be granting to someone else. In this case, his own son, the messianic king, Jesus. But we also have a description here of something that is actually talked about throughout the Old Testament, even here in the Psalms, where it's talking about how God is going to destroy the enemies. And so we don't really love to have this sort of gruesome language, but it says he will execute judgment among the nations, filling them with corpses. He will shatter chiefs over the wide earth. So again, it's just underscoring God's power that he is able to do that. And that the ultimate heir of David, the Davidic king to come, will conquer the Gentile leaders so that all people will serve their new king, the Messiah. So again, this is a royal psalm. We're thinking about this in the context of royalty written by David during that time. Now, I'm going to flip back to one other verse that's going to help us kind of understand that motif of the king being able to conquer all of the Gentile leaders. We're gonna go over to Isaiah. So it's a couple of books to the right of Psalms where we are right now. Psalm 110 is what we've been reading. And then we're gonna go over to Isaiah chapter 11, verse four. And you can just listen in if it's easier 
for you to listen. But I really wanted you to hear this voice, this verse, because it's so interesting. Um, it says, let's see. I think I have, oops, I think I have the wrong reference here. I'm going to double check. Bear with me. Thank you for your patience. Oh, it talks about Isaiah 11 verses 1 through 10 and the rule here in the midst of it. Isaiah chapter 11 verse 4. Okay. It says that's what it is. But with righteousness, he shall judge the poor and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. And he shall strike the earth with the rod of his mouth and with the breath of his lips, he shall kill the wicked. So this is a reference to what is going to be done in the future that God in his power is going to prevail. But what is the point? What is he looking toward? And this is what I love. This psalm even brings us back, even though it's got this kind of vivid, gruesome language here talking about filling with the corpses. It reminds us that God's goal, that his point, and even his reason for sending his son Jesus is that both Jews and Gentiles will serve him, that they will see and experience his glory, that his son Jesus will come as a sacrifice for all of us, that this is the atonement that it talks about in the Bible, that Jesus goes to the cross in our places, that we don't have to be responsible for our sin anymore, that he has gone in our place, died in our places so that we might be forgiven, that we might enjoy the reign of the king forever. And, you know, some of this language is a little bit difficult to understand, but I want us to think about how Jesus is our ultimate priest king, that he is both the priest and the king, that he guides us, that he intercedes for us, that he cares for us, that he atoned for our sin. He interceded on our behalf when he died on the cross and he continues to intercede for us today. And he sent the Holy Spirit so that we can have wisdom and guidance and to intercede for us in prayer when we are in the midst of challenges. And so I want you to think about this as we head into 2023. It's a new year. And I know some of you are walking into this new year a little weary, a little worn, a little broken, maybe worn out from what you experienced in 2022. I know for me that when it came to midnight of 2022, the dawn of 2023 on New Year's Eve, and actually it was past midnight that I climbed into bed with my husband and I just said, we survived. We survived. We had some hard things that happened last year. We had some challenging things that our kids went through. And at the same time, just recognizing how Jesus walked us through 365 days. And so friends, as we start this new year, maybe you have an eagerness in your soul. Maybe it's been a great year for you already. Maybe you're starting off on the right foot or you've got some new habits or practices that you're putting into motion or maybe you're in the midst of trial. You have received that devastating diagnosis. You're walking alongside a child who is child who's struggling or a friend who's struggling. I just want to remind you that Jesus died and rose again, that he is on the throne, that he is sitting at the right hand of the Father and that we also can look forward to the future when he will come and reign again here on earth. And so friends, in these final minutes, I'm going to go ahead and move us into a time of prayer. You just go ahead and type in the comments. If you have some prayer requests, if you have some things that are pressing on your heart, if you're looking at 2023 and you feel overwhelmed and you want to just put an emoji in the comments, you don't even want to type it out. I understand. And if you are praising God, if you are rejoicing in the fact that he is omnipotent, that he is all powerful, we can do that together today too. Let's bow our hearts together and pray. Father God, we thank you for ushering us into 2023 and through Psalm 110 that we have been 
invited, that we have been reminded that you hold that position of honor, that you are the messianic king, that you are both the priest and the king, that you guide us, Lord, that you intercede for us. I'm so deeply grateful for the ways that I can see you interceded in 2022 on my behalf, in times where I was facing challenges in my leadership, in times where I was alongside my daughters and praying them through some challenges and trials and difficulties that they were going through as I was um, praying over other family members who were going through surgery and going through hard times. God, we thank you. Thank you for being the king. May we be reminded of that. I have to be honest and say, you know, so often there's this chaos that is swirling in our world and there's unrest and difficulty between leaders and I can get distracted. I can forget that you are still on the throne, that your son Jesus died on our behalf so that we can walk daily in victory, that we can drink from the brook by the way, as it says here in verse seven, that you are the lifter of our heads. We thank you for that, Lord Jesus. I want to pray for some of these comments that are here live on Instagram. We we thank you for Kathy, who was with us here this morning, and we pray for her daughter who has a medical test on Monday. God, I don't know the details of this test, but you know every detail. You know every hair on the head of Kathy's daughter. And so we pray, God, that you would go with her with this medical test, that you would calm her spirit, and that if it be your will, that there would be healing in her body for whatever the need is. I also want to pray along with Beth Gillespie here that we would totally trust you, God, that we would let go and we would let you step into that place of power, that you would guide our steps, that you would be our priest and our king. And so we thank you for that, God. And I think about actually um, Psalm 31 that I was teaching out of yesterday for my mom's prayer group and how David, even when he was being pursued by his son Absalom, even when he was just close to death, death was breathing down his neck, David chose to repeat this phrase, but I trust in you, but I trust in you. Psalm 31 verse 14, but I trust in you. And so God, today, On January 13th, 23, we say, we trust you as we step into this new year, but I trust you. And whatever that first blank is, that thing that we are staring down, that feels insurmountable, that seems overwhelming, we say it, we declare it today, but I trust you. And if anyone is listening, I want to include, I also want to just encourage you to type that in the comments, just as a declaration over 2023, but I trust trust you, but I trust in the Lord. We also want to pray for Mama T's family members that are going through some really challenging things right now. Thanks for sharing that with us, God. You see, you see what they're going through. You see um, what they are struggling with. And God, will you be their priest and their king? Will you guide them? Will you intercede on their behalf? Will you give Mama T the words that she needs as she is ministering and caring For these family members, if she's to reach out to someone maybe who she hasn't talked to in a long time, I don't know the situation, God, give her the courage to do that. We also pray over the Griffin family. These are family friends that my parents are mentioning in the comments who lost their 50-year-old daughter. Um, She was a wife and a mother of three. God, we pray. We pray over that family as they're grieving right now, especially those three kids and her husband. God, would you remind them that you are all powerful, that you're omnipotent, that you are powerful even over death. And so even though there's sadness in the loss of this life, of this mother, of this wife, there's also rejoicing in heaven that she gets to be with you. And we're so thankful for that. God, we we trust you. I love seeing here in the comments so many people who are typing that in, but I trust you. And so we will conclude with that this morning. Lord, we trust you in all things. We surrender. We are thankful for your son, Jesus, who sits at the right hand in the position of honor. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. 
Well, thank you friends for joining me here on Walking Through His Word with Darina. I'm here every Friday with a few exceptions. Um, I do take a couple of breaks here and there, but this is so exciting. We are at Psalm 110. So that means we have marched through, we have walked through 110 Psalms together. And even before that, there were some other passages of scriptures that I was looking through and just meditating on with all of you. So if you've been here for many years, I just, and honestly, we've been doing this for years. I want to say thank you. And if you're new around here, I hope you will come back. I hope you will tag a friend in the comments to let them know about this broadcast. It's only about 30 minutes every Friday that we walk through a Psalm. So next week we'll be going through Psalm 111 if you wanna take a sneak peek. And I wanna just also encourage you to hop over to my website, darinagilmore.com. You can sign up there for my glory and this is a letter, a an essay that I write every weekend. I send it out on Saturdays and it's a word of encouragement for you. I'm using a new platform called Substack and so you can even write a comment to the letter and see what other people are commenting, engage with others in the community. I'm really excited about Substack because it's a way that you can um, talk to not just me, but others who are reading the words that I'm sharing and we can build community in that way. So you can sign up for that at darinagilmore.com. I also am so excited about just kicking off this new year and today I have an article over on Proverbs 31. They share daily devotionals. And so I would love it if you would hop over to Proverbs 31 and check out that devotional, which um, came out this morning. It's actually kind of a fun one. It's called Running Past Snakes what to do when you face a distraction. And this is actually something that happened to me in a race that I was running um, last year where I saw a snake. And so if you wanna find out what happens, go check that out. Um, it's gonna be linked on my Facebook page as well as you know, if you wanna just head over to Proverbs 31 Ministries, their website has the daily devotional up today. Friends, thanks for being with me. It's always a joy for me to see people here engaging live and to know that many of you are watching this later as a recording. And may you be reminded that Jesus is our priest king, that he is all powerful, that he is on your side. I'll see you next Friday. Take care.